accidental shootings are also deaths we want to prevent. And we're not going to prevent all of them. But we can do better. We're not going to. Through this initiative alone, solve all the problems of inner city crime. Some of that, as I said, has to do with investing in these communities and making sure. There's good education and jobs and opportunity and great parents, and moral responsibility. and ethical behavior, and instilling that in our kids that's going to be important. So this is not a proposal to solve every problem. It's a modest way of us getting started on improving the prospects of young men and young women like you. The same way we try to improve every other aspect of our lives. That's all it is. And if we get started as I said before, it used to be people didn't wear seat belts, didn't have airbags. It takes 20, 30 years, but you look and then you realize all these amazing lives of young. People like this who are contributing to our society because we came together in a practical way. Looking at evidence, looking at data, and figured out how can we make that work better. Right now, Congress prohibits us even studying through the center. For disease control ways in which we could reduce gun violence. That's how crazy this thing has become. Let's at least figure out what works. And some of the proposals that I'm making may turn out are not as effective as others. But at least let's figure it out, let's try some things. Let's not just assume that every few weeks there's a mass shooting that gets publicity.
Every few months there's one that gets national publicity. Every day there are a whole bunch of folks shot on streets around the country that we don't even hear about. That is not something that we can be satisfied with. And part of my faith and hope in America is just that not that we achieve a perfect union. But that we get better. And we can do better than we're doing right now if we come together. Thank you. Anderson Cooper President Obama, appreciate it very much. Barack Obama Free Community College Plan Speech Deliver January 9, 2105, Pellissippi State Community College, Knoxville, Tennessee Hello, everybody. Hey. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Everybody. Please have a seat. Please have a seat. Well, it is good to be back in Tennessee. I hope you guys aren't getting tired of me. I've been coming around a lot lately, because there's a lot of good stuff happening here. I want to begin by thanking Joe and Jill Biden. They're not just good friends and good partners, but they really believe in the power of education and they really believe in creating those kinds of ladders of opportunity that gave All three of us and Michelle the chances, the incredible opportunities that we've had today. And they understand the promise of America's community colleges.
Well, Jill really understands it, and Joe he doesn't really have a choice. Before I get into the reason that I'm here today, I want to begin by saying just a few words. About the tragic events that we've watched unfold in France over the last several hours and days. And because events have been fast moving this morning, I wanted to make sure to comment on them. I just spoke to my counter-terrorism advisor. We have been in close touch with the French government throughout this tragedy. The moment that the outrageous attack took place, we directed all of our law enforcement and counterintelligence operations to provide whatever support that our ally needs in confronting this challenge. We're hopeful that the immediate threat is now resolved. Thanks to the courage and professionalism of the French personnel on the ground. But the French government continues to face the threat of terrorism and has to remain vigilant. The situation is fluid. President Hollande has made it clear that They're going to do whatever is necessary to protect their people. And I think it's important for us to understand, France is our oldest ally. I want the people of France to know that the United States stands with you today, stands with you tomorrow. Our thoughts and prayers are with the families who have been directly impacted. We grieve with you. We fight alongside you to uphold our values. The values that we share universal values that bind us together as friends and as allies. And in the streets of Paris, the world has seen once again what terrorists stand for. They have nothing to offer but hatred and human suffering.
and we stand for freedom and hope and the dignity of all human beings. And that's what the city of Paris represents to the world. And that spirit will endure forever long after the scourge of terrorism is banished from this world. Now, I'm in Knoxville not only because I just like Knoxville, but I'm here today because one of my Resolutions is to make sure that folks across this great country feel like they are coming back. And there is no doubt, thanks to the steps we took early on to rescue. our economy and to rebuild it on a new foundation, America is coming back. Now, I'm not running for office anymore, so let me just present the facts. I promised that 2014 would be a breakthrough year for America. This morning, we got more evidence to back that up. In December, our businesses created 240,000 new jobs. Our unemployment rate fell to 5.6%, which is the lowest in six and a half years. What that means is, 2014 was the strongest year for job growth since the 1990s. Unemployment fell in 2014 faster than any year since 1984. Now, think about that. It's been 30 years since unemployment fell as fast as it did last year. And most importantly, we're seeing faster job growth in industries that provide good paying jobs. traditionally middle-class jobs, than anything else. Since 2010, the United States of America has created more jobs than Europe. Japan, and every other advanced economy combined.
American manufacturing is in its best stretch of job growth since the 1990s. We're actually seeing companies insourcing instead of outsourcing. They're realizing, we want to be here with American workers making American products. America is now the world's number one producer in oil, gas. We've doubled the production of clean energy. And, by the way, you're saving about a buck ten a gallon at the pump over this time last year. Although I keep on reminding folks, gas prices, they go up and they come down and then they go up. So I just want everybody to know that you should enjoy this. Take the money you're saving, pay off the credit card or go get a new appliance. Or buy a fuel efficient car so that when prices go back up, you're still well positioned. Thanks to the Affordable Care Act, about 10 million Americans have gained health insurance over the past year. And, by the way, we've done this while cutting our deficits by about two-thirds. Everybody thinks that they did a survey in every survey, they ask, is the deficit going up or going down? And 70% of Americans say that the deficit is going up. The deficit has come down by two-thirds since I took office. Meanwhile, thanks to the hard work of students and educators, dropout rates are down, graduation rates are up. And after 13 long years, our war in Afghanistan has come to a responsible end. And we've got more troops that were home this holiday season. So I say all this because these six years have demanded a
lot of hard work and a lot of sacrifice on everybody's part. And as a country, we've got every right to be proud of what we've got to show for it. America's resurgence. is real. And now that we've seen calmer waters economically, if we all do our part, if we all pitch in. Then we can start making sure that all boats are actually lifted again, and wages and incomes start rising again. And we can make sure that the middle class is the engine that powers America's prosperity just as it always has. So that's going to be the focus of my State of the Union address in a couple weeks. I wanted to give you a little preview. Don't tell anybody I said this. I'm giving you the inside scoop. That's going to be the essence of my message, how do we build on the progress that we've made? And I figured, why wait for the State of the Union? Why stand on formalities, let's get the ball rolling right now. Two days ago, I visited Michigan, where workers have brought the auto industry roaring back. And we talked about what else we can do around advanced manufacturing. Yesterday, I was in Arizona, where I announced new actions to make. The dream of homeownership a reality for more middle class families. Later today, Joe and I are going to head to a company in Clinton to take action that will develop high-tech industry even further here in Tennessee. And right here, Right now, at Pellissippi State, I'm going to announce one of my most important State of the Union proposals. And that's helping every American afford a higher education.